Hello, and welcome to Confessions of a Frustrated Game Master. I am Robert, the narrator, and thank you, thank you very much for joining me for another episode. So this is episode two of Confessions of a Frustrated Game Master. Great expectations. What will great expectations be about? Well, it's of course another uh, great tip, something that I have learned from my uh, many years of being in the tabletop RPG hobby, being a Methuselah, uh, if, if you will. Uh, in the um, in the hobby and something that I actually have not had a great opportunity to take advantage of uh, or to, to put uh, into practice but I still think that it's a fantastic uh, tip or trick um, for you game masters out there the reason I haven't had an opportunity to take advantage of this uh, trick or tip uh, very much is because most of the time I role play with the guys that I have been who introduced me to the hobby 20 plus years ago uh, and and or uh, guys that I have been I met shortly after that that I've been role playing with for uh, for a great deal of time so I usually don't um, get to use this this tip or trick much but because it would be kind of weird after 20 or so years of playing with the same guys whipping this information out as if uh, they don't know it but it can be a great uh, tip or trick for you for someone who may um, come across playing uh, with a different group of players every once in a while or being exposed to uh, playing with different players a great deal and what I'm talking about is your expectations uh, for your players and for your game as a game master. So I suggest that any game master uh, have a list uh, of expectations that you have for your players or what they can expect from you uh, as the game master before you start playing. And essentially what this will do is, is obviously it'll let your players know uh, what they're in for uh, what style you're going to be using or, or whatever your style is as a game master so it won't uh, come out of left field and, and kind of uh, surprise them and um, what you what kind of behaviors you will and will not accept from them uh, as I said I have been playing with the the same players for many many years so we're, we're all uh, friends we, we have um, our tabletop RPG relationship you know based on our existing friendships so this is not something that I really have ever used with my uh, with my regular gaming group over the last couple of years we've had uh, two or three new players added into the mix of the group of guys uh, that I role play with but but still those guys had a um, uh, a, a loose relationship with some individual players in my group so whipping these rules out of, of expectations uh, that I have for them and, and what my style is really isn't um, wouldn't be appropriate but for you as a game master if you're ever sitting down uh, with a new group of players who aren't necessarily friends and who may not understand your gaming style and understand what you uh, what you expect from from them this could be fantastic you know once you um, make a decision on what game you're playing what system you're using you know what what genre uh, you're going to play what you're going to want to do to not uh, waste anybody's time or to surprise anyone is let them know you can email or give them a, a handout uh, of a printed copy of your your expectations as a game master now I have a list uh, that I have uh, printed out for myself because as I mentioned in uh, episode one Groundhog Day uh, I my gaming has been a little uh, limited as of late you know life gets in the way uh, as an uh, as an adult schedules become a little bit a little bit hectic so I haven't had an opportunity to game as much as I wanted to and uh, so obviously 
um, in order to meet to to mitigate those scheduling um, restrictions, I've considered going out and maybe putting together uh, some other groups, gaming with uh, individuals that aren't aren't long term, uh, long time friends, and maybe getting a game started that way. So this is uh, something that would be great to introduce uh, yourself to new players. So I actually. Um, Printed up a uh, printed up a list or, or typed up a list and printed it out so that and you know uh, just in case I come across getting together a new group and you'll get an idea of the kind of things that I'm thinking about as I as I go through my list of things that are really in, important to me and of course I will uh, tell you what you should add to your list and I'm going to go ahead and do that now so basically the list of GM expectations. Uh, what you're going to want to add uh, to this list, as I mentioned briefly, is first of all, you're going to want to address your play style. Um, if you are getting a group together and they have agreed to, to sit down with you as a game master, you probably have already worked out the setting and uh, the system and the genre and that's going to go a long way to letting your players know what kind of game uh, you're interested in but you know there is still a lot of variety in other games like if you're playing Dungeons and Dragons you definitely could have several different uh, fantasy genres uh, that you could approach the game from so just because you're playing Dungeons and Dragons or any other game It doesn't necessarily tell the players what your what your play style is um, And so you may have to uh, address that with them and, and lay that out for them uh, after you know uh, play style you're going to want to let them know any rules of uh, at the table uh, you know, as far as uh, behavior and player uh, courtesy, you're going to want to uh, lay this out for all of your players so that they they know what is and what is not acceptable at your table. Again, so they're not surprised, so this doesn't hit them uh, from left field. So you can you know say, hey, this is what I will and this is what I will not accept at my table, and um, I, I wish that everyone will uh, would abide. Uh, by that and you also can throw uh, if you are so inclined throw in any house rules uh, that you may have for this particular system now as a uh, as a gamer myself I really like sticking to the letter of the rules uh, most of the time especially uh, when it comes to a new game, a game that I'm not super familiar with, I like trying to sit down and stick to the letter of the rules as much as I can because I figure that any game that I'm playing was probably uh, play tested thoroughly by several people. The designers uh, know what the uh, what the weaknesses and flaws may be in their game. So before I start modifying and 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 kit bashing or anything a system I sit down and I try to stick to the rules as as written because I don't have a full understanding uh, of the rules and um, or if I'm playing a game when I sit down and play it I'm expecting that the game master is unless they say otherwise is going to stick to the letter of the rules because I'm the type of person you know when I sit down for any type of endeavor I want to know where I stand um, what type of footing I'm on I just want to, uh, to know that my what I think that I'm going to get out of the game is actually what I'm going to get out of the game so it really you know you make decisions about your character based on the rules and if you found find out that there's a house rule and you could have made a decision on creating your character that those house rules uh, kind of make uh, invalid so I like to know going in what my options are what rules are in play what rules are not in play and something that you can put into your GM expectations are your house rules so you can throw in your house rules, uh, any behaviors that you uh, you think are um, 
are fair or not fair or you're not going to stand for or you encourage uh, at your table and those will uh, go a long way to making your game a really smooth experience so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over my list of GM expectations that I have to kind of give you an idea of what I think uh, is a good idea to have in your list that you hand out to your players. So uh, the first thing that I have on my list, and I, I guess this is in the order of importance, I don't know, I may change it around a little bit, but the first thing that I have is respect. And at my table, everyone will be treated with respect by me at all times, and I demand that everyone else treat their fellow participants with respect at all times. If you do not, I will ask you to leave my game. So that's the first thing uh, on my list of GM expectations that I hand out to the players is that everyone is going to be respected by me and everyone at my table is going to respect every other participant. That's something that I, I demand and I think it's it's a good idea. Uh, I, I don't care what kind of game you're, uh, you're running, what kind of rule set you're running. This, uh, that, this should be on every... Uh, game masters uh, GM expectations um, uh, list. Uh, the next thing uh, that I have on my list is um, uh, everyone's uh, time uh, should be respected. This is something that is really a pet peeve of mine. Essentially, what this means is, as as part of um, respecting everyone, everyone's time should be respected. Uh, you know, everyone in the game is an adult and I am not the type of GM who's going to give you the third degree or interrogate you if you can't make it for a particular session. I won't even ask you why you're not coming, but I, I really demand that all of my players, any of my players who can't make it for a particular session, text me or give me a call to let me know that they're not going to uh, that they're not coming to the game uh, for that evening and the reason for this is, is a logistical reason it's very simple it really uh, sucks if there is not a game because of lack of participation you know if one or two people call out it's a possibility that the, the game could be canceled and I don't want any of my players to think that hey I can just not call and have people waiting for me because I don't want anyone to you know take the time out of their busy schedule to get in their car or get on the bus and come out to the game just to find out that the game won't be happening because I'm sure all of my players uh, have lives and they have things that hey you know if uh, there's not going to be a game I can make other plans so that for that reason I ask all of my players that as soon as you know that you're not going to be able to make it to the game give me a call or drop me a text message and let me know and I, I just reassure them that I'm not even gonna ask you why you know it, it really doesn't matter I just want to be able to um, to not waste anyone's time and effort that may be coming to the game so if enough people call out I get a heads up uh, as soon as possible I can let the other players know and maybe you know if they're not there's not going to be a game they can find something else to do so that's something that's really a pet peeve for me again you know I'm not going to give you um, uh, interrogation as to why you're not coming to tonight's session we're all adults here but I just it's just a courtesy uh, for the other players and, and for myself who uh, who has lives now this is this next um, thing on my GM expectations list is something that I think I'm going to devote uh, an entire uh, episode too so I'm not going to talk about it too much but look out for uh, another episode that is going to have this as the main topic on my uh, the next thing on my list of GM expectations is everyone is responsible for the game being fun and essentially what this is saying is that role-playing is a uh, cooperative uh, storytelling uh, endeavor and the GM is not solely responsible for the game being fun. Uh, the game kid will only be fun if everyone participating, the GM and the players, are making an effort 
to make the game fun. And I'm going to leave it at that because, again, I think I'm going to dedicate an entire episode uh, to this topic. So I'm going to leave it at that. Everyone is responsible for the game being fun. The next thing on my list of GM expectations is stay focused. Uh, the one thing that keeps the game fun is focused players. Pay attention, participate, and put down your phone or tablet. Think about what your character will do while it's not your turn. This keeps the game flowing and will get more done. So you, this should be obvious, but sometimes uh, players uh, show up to the game and you know they have uh, their electronic devices which you know when I started role-playing of course this wasn't much of an issue but you have tablets and phones and other distractions and I just assume have my players hey guys um, let's get something done let's have a fun time here let's not slow the process down with electronic devices or distractions put them away and let's stay focused and that's just something you know that I I request so uh, what I found in my games is that different players have different uh, focus levels or different uh, things that they want to get out of the game some players want other uh, just there excuse me because their friends are there and they're just there to have fun they really don't care if they get anything done in the game and that can cause frictions with players who do want to accomplish some things, who are there uh, to do more than just hang out with friends. They want to get through the storyline. They want to discover new things. They want to have fun role playing. And I have, in my games, had frictions between those two players who are just there to hang out and have fun and players who really uh, want to focus on the story at hand and, and accomplish uh, some stuff. So if you let them know, and again, this may be one of the things that any GM uh, can put on their list of uh, GM expectations uh, that you want the players to stay focused so you don't have that friction or that headbutting between uh, those two types of players. So stay focused. Uh, that's on my list of GM expectations. The next thing on my list is the fact that I have uh, an open as a GM. I have an open door policy. If there is something you are not enjoying about my game, say something. I would rather have my ego a little bruised than to lose a good player because they didn't tell me they were not enjoying the game. I am completely open to suggestions and criticism. I will ask, however, that if you disagree with the ruling I make, quickly make your point during the game, and if we still don't agree, I'll ask that you talk to me about it after the game to keep the game moving. So again, this is something, I don't think there's anything on this list that, well, may, maybe the last uh, item on the net, uh, list, uh, but I don't think that there's anything on this list that, that cannot apply to every uh, game master um, as, as a good advice. Maybe, you know, the, um, uh, the time-wasting thing where, where you want to be uh, contacted by players if they're not going to show up for a session. Some game masters may may not require that. As a matter of fact, I've seen a lot of game masters who you know they don't get they don't get upset if you don't call them. Uh, you know, but I, I think it's a respect thing for the other players and for myself. I like being contacted. But but anyway, I have an open door policy. I can't stress this enough. And this may be a good thing for every game master. Encourage your players all the time, every time, that if they are not enjoying something about the game, say something. And don't don't beat them over the head, don't argue with them, don't don't be offended if a player is not enjoying something. Uh, at, I try to make a point at the end of every session to ask my players, are you enjoying the game? Is there anything uh, that I can do different? Are there any goals that you may have uh, for your characters or things that I can um, uh, place in the game that will uh, make you enjoy the game more or anything that you're trying to accomplish with your particular character to keep those lines of communication open because it's very important obviously without players you don't have a game so you want them to be happy and you want them to feel like that they can uh, approach you and talk to you about what they may or may not be enjoying in the game so an open door policy that's that's my policy and that's the way that um that i like to operate as a game master and the last thing on my list of gm expectations is keeping it real uh and this is i guess um one of two uh tips that 
I may not be able to suggest that every GM uh, has it, but this is uh, you definitely don't ne won't ne just, uh, won't necessarily be exactly uh, your play style. But of everything on the list, this goes towards your play style as a game master and what you expect. And uh, for the most part, I run what it what this what it says. Uh, it's for the most part, I run a serious, uh, non-genre breaking game. Uh, I like to think of myself as a funny, fun-loving game master, and there will be a lot of humor and jokes happening at the table outside of the game. Uh, that being said, in-game, I tend to run a tense, dramatic, heroic, non-comedic, or silly game. So if you're looking for a comedic uh, comedy or silliness in-game, other than a few NPCs who may be played for laughs, I may not be the right game master for you. So that right there, that last um, expectation, kind of lays out what my play style is and how I'm, how I'm going to run the game. Obviously, when you're getting together with friends or even if you're with strangers, humor is going to happen. Uh, people are going to crack jokes. Um, the whole uh, point of uh, a role-playing game is to at least attempt uh, to have fun and I do that in um, in spades uh, I uh, crack jokes sometimes and and I try to try to keep myself uh, from doing this but sometimes I'll break uh, out of uh, character and make some uh, observational funny comments and I encourage other players to do it uh, you know uh, to a minimum and uh, just to make the game uh, fun so I'm not you know uh, a stodgy you're gonna listen to me and we're not gonna make any jokes kind of kind of game master but I uh, but in game I usually don't run you know comedic uh, silly games at least I don't do it um, as campaigns and um, so I want my players to know that it's going to be a serious, heroic, epic uh, style game that's going to be fairly serious and I'm going to stick to um, the, uh, the general uh, aspects of the genre as uh, most people understand them. And there will be joking and fun at the table outside of game, but I, I usually don't uh, inject that into my game unless I have a quirky kind of weird uh, NPC and I'm trying to get uh, interject a little a little bit of humor but mostly it's a uh, heroic uh, cinematic uh, serious style game and that's really my style so as you can see I have a lot of the things that I think it is important to lay out for uh, your players uh, the behaviors that you expect from the players mine is you know respect at the table you're gonna respect everybody at the table and the fact that I really um, would appreciate that you contact me if you're not going to show up for the session just out of courtesy to myself and the other players who are spending their time um, and the fact that uh, everyone is responsible for the game being fun not just the game uh, master again as I said I'm going to go ahead and do um, uh, an entire episode on, on that idea uh, the other behaviors, you know, staying focused while we're at the table. Put the electronics away and let's role play. Let's have fun. Uh, that should be, uh, I think, everybody's goal if we're going to have um, a smooth game. And the fact that I have an open door uh, policy. Tell me if you're not enjoying the game. Interject. Let me know what you're looking to do for the game so I can uh, keep the game as fun as possible and keeping it real. Um, the type of game that I, I run is fairly. Uh, fairly, fairly serious in genre game. There will be lots of fun and laughs at the table, but not. Uh, we usually will keep those uh, on the outside of the game. So those are the kind of things that you should be honest with uh, with your players. As I said in um, in episode one, I, I believe it was. Uh, is role playing should be about transparency and communication and honesty. It's really difficult to uh, have a successful uh, campaign uh, or role-playing, uh, tabletop role-playing uh, endeavor if you're not going to communicate, if you're not going to be honest, and if everyone is not on the same page. So this list of GM expectations really goes a long way to uh, fulfilling that uh, for the Game Master and for 
the players. So that's uh, that's everything I have. Great expectations, episode uh, two. Uh, hopefully those um, tips and tricks uh, help you out. And uh, something that uh, I wish I had done a long time ago, but my many, many years in the hobby has uh, told me that this is, this is a great, important thing. Hand your expectations out to your players so everyone is on the same page and you'll have a much uh, smoother game. So again, thank you for joining me for Confessions of a Frustrated Game Master. And good morning or good evening, wherever you are. Thanks a lot.